Hello, I'm Louise from Agriland. Young farmers in Ireland today are facing many challenges with issues such as succession, land availability, finance, all compounded by the changing climate. Throughout this series, we bring to you three young farmers who explain what they believe are the biggest challenges on their farm and what they'd like to see done. I'm here in Castle Blaney, County Monaghan, with suckler and sheep farmer David McCarney. David, would you like to start off by telling us a little bit about the main challenges you feel are facing young farmers in Ireland today? Yeah, good morning, Louise. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that there's a couple of challenges facing young farmers. Uh, probably the main one is the climate reduction targets that we have to meet underneath the Climate Action Plan. We've got our 25% reduction in emissions by 2030 and that's legally binding and we know we have to reach that. Yeah, so I think that's going to be the main one that we have. It is going to be a challenge, but I think it is doable. Another challenge that I suppose facing young farmers is the age and farmer population and farm succession. It's one of them taboo topics that nobody likes to talk about. But it is, it's very real. So I think that's what these difficult conversations are, are worth having. And David, would you be able to tell me a little bit about how you got into farming and how you juggle work with that on the side? I'm very lucky. I've got a permanent job off farm, so I'm not dependent on the farm here. So it's basically me and the father and the rest of the family help us out as well but it's not simple there's there's a lot there's a lot to juggle here on a daily basis we've got maybe with 80 cows here or something like that and we're taking them on to beef so there's a lot of work here and our busiest time is the springtime when we're calving cows with lamb and sheep as well i'm just i've been farming here as long as i remember sort of helping out as much as i can and it sort of it was just always in me and then i went to dublin and done the I done the agricultural science in, in ucd and i got on very well there and then I got into my job. And in terms of sustainability then, David, how have you had to change things on your farm to adapt to recent times? Yeah, Louise, so yeah, we've made a number of changes over the last couple of years. A couple of years ago, we joined the department run soil sampling programme. We soil sampled the whole farm. From that, we developed a nutrient management plan that we put into place. And from that, we've been able to reduce the amount of fertiliser that we're spreading on the farm. We've been able to tailor sort of towards what the land needs and that's reducing runoff and reducing the cost in the first place of applying nutrients that we don't need to be applying. As well as that we've uh, implemented low emission slurry spreading so that's been a real advantage as well. We've seen better regrowths and we've utilised more grass and better use of our organic slurries here on the farm and as well as that I suppose over the last number of years we've moved towards more uh, have a higher genetic merit animals on the farm here. We, as you can see, we've got a lot of crosses out from the dairy herd, so we've got a very milky suckler herd here. For the last two years, we've been crossing them back with high genetic merit Angus bulls. From that, we've seen you know, improved growth rates. Obviously, we're talking a very different animal than the shardies that we were used to. They're smaller, but we're finding that they're more efficient in, con in converting, converting their feed. They're easier finished as well. It was, and, and we're finishing them at younger ages, we're actually finishing, we're focusing on 16 month bull beef here. So we're getting our bulls sold earlier and they've got a, a less of a carbon footprint. And now David, so do you think that the current climate goals in place at the moment are achievable for farmers? Yeah, Louise, I'll, I suppose if you look at the Mac curve and you look at what Chagas are telling us, we know that they are achievable, we know they are achievable, but uh, the challenge is the rest with you know the high levels of uptake. You know we're going to have to have very 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 high levels of uptake of all the measures in the MacCov to be able to reach those targets. And what more would you like to see in that policy? What more do you think could be done there? I think maybe going forward, I'd like to see maybe if it was at all possible, you know, another scheme, something like something like acres, yeah, just for the farmers that weren't able to participate uh, to be able to join and be able to do their part for the environment, for the biodiversity and the climate. And do you think that the issue of climate change? is stopping young farmers from getting involved or do you think it's issues elsewhere with incentivising young people because obviously there has been a problem that you have highlighted with getting young people into the industry. Where do you think the issue lies? I think that young farmers have never been as educated as they have been. You know, and that's great to see, you know, everyone has a green start, everyone is uh, even more in a lot of places. Education is the main thing. I don't see the climate reduction targets holding farmers back as such or holding young people back from joining the agricultural sector. I think the main thing is that work-life balance. It has to be sustainable.